Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Bodicher. I'm the Director of Media Relations here at the Bank of Canada, and I'll be moderating today's press conference. Governor Macklem and Senior Deputy Governor Rogers will be pleased to take questions until roughly 11.45 today. Governor Macklem, we'll start with some opening remarks, and then we will go to your questions. So without further ado, Governor. Good morning. I am pleased to be here with Senior Deputy Governor Rogers to discuss today's policy announcement and the Bank of Canada's uh, monetary policy report. Russia's unprovoked, is there a problem? Okay, sorry. Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine is causing enormous human suffering and our hearts go out to the Ukrainian people. The war has also introduced a major new source of uncertainty to the global outlook and it is boosting already high inflation in many countries, including Canada. Against this background, we have three main messages this morning. Premièrement, l'économie canadienne est forte. En général, elle s'est remise de la pandémie et entre dans une phase de demande excédentaire. Deuxièmement, l'inflation est trop élevée. Elle dépasse nos attentes et va rester élevée pendant plus longtemps qu'on ne pensait. Et troisièmement, on a besoin de taux d'intérêt plus élevés. Le taux directeur est notre principal outil pour maintenir l'équilibre économique et ramener l'inflation à la cible de 2 Ce matin, on a relevé ce taux de 50 points de base pour le faire passer à 1 Comme on l'a dit, les Canadiens devraient s'attendre à d'autres hausses. Let me reiterate these main messages in English. First, the Canadian economy is strong. Overall, the economy has fully recovered from the pandemic and is now moving into excess demand. Second, inflation is too high. It is higher than we expected, and it's going to be elevated for longer than we previously thought. And third, we need higher interest rates. Our policy interest rate is our primary tool to keep the economy in balance and bring inflation back to the 2% target. This morning, we raised our policy rate 50 basis points to 1%, and we indicated Canadians should expect further increases. Let me expand on each of these three themes. Recent data suggests the Canadian economy weathered the Omicron variant remarkably well, and the economy has considerable momentum going into the second quarter. A broad set of indicators suggests that our economy is now moving into excess demand. The labor market shows this clearly. Job growth has been strong. The unemployment rate is at a record low. Job vacancies are elevated. And wage growth has reached pre-pandemic levels. And businesses are also telling us they expect they'll need to increase wages further to keep and attract workers. Looking forward, momentum in most major spending components points to strong GDP growth this year. Canadians are spending more on services as pu public health measures ease, and spending on goods remains solid. Housing activity has remained strong and is expected to moderate, but to still elevated levels. Business investment and exports are both picking up, and higher prices for many of the commodities Canada exports are bringing more income into the country. Higher interest rates should moderate growth in domestic spending as we move through this year and next. At the same time, Canada's productive capacity should be helped by robust investment, improved labour productivity, and higher immigration. Putting all this together, the bank forecasts the Canadian economy will grow 4.25% this year before moderating to 3.25% next year and 2.25% in 2024. The bank's primary focus is inflation. We are acutely aware that already high inflation has risen further above our target. The invasion of Ukraine has driven up the prices of energy and other commodities, and the war is further disrupting global supply chains. We're also concerned about the broadening of price pressures in Canada. With about two-thirds of CPI components growing above 3%, Canadians are feeling inflation across their household budgets, from gas to groceries to rent. 
CPI inflation hit a three-decade high of 5.7% in February, above what we projected in the January monetary policy report. We now expect inflation to average almost 6% in the first half of 2022 and remain well above our 1% to 3% control range throughout this year. We then expect it to ease to about 2.5% in the second half of 2023 before returning to the 2% target in 2024. With inflation broadening and remaining higher for longer, the risk is that Canadians start to think that high inflation will become entrenched. This leads me to my third point. Interest rates are increasing. Raising the policy rate is our main tool to moderate demand, prevent a persistent buildup in domestic price pressures, and keep inflation expectations moored on the 2% target. The economy can handle higher interest rates, and they are needed. Increases in the bank's policy rate raise the interest rates that banks and other lenders charge their customers. These include rates on business loans, consumer loans, and mortgage loans. With increases in the policy rate, interest paid on savings products will move up as well. By making borrowing more expensive and increasing the return on savings, a higher policy rate dampens spending, reducing overall demand in the economy. And with demand starting to run ahead of the economy's supply capacity, we need this to happen to bring the economy into balance and cool domestic inflation. We also need higher interest rates to keep Canadians' expectations of inflation anchored on the target so that as global inflationary pressures from higher oil prices and clogged supply chains abate, inflation in Canada falls back towards the target range. We are committed to using our policy rate to return inflation to target, and will do so forcefully if needed. Let me now say a few words about the Governing Council's deliberations. On a bien sûr parlé de l'impact économique de l'invasion de l'Ukraine. La guerre a fait monter les prix de l'énergie et leur volatilité. Elle a aussi perturbé les échanges commerciaux, accru l'incertitude et causé de la volatilité sur les marchés financiers. Cela va peser sur la croissance mondiale, surtout en Europe de l'Est. L'impact du conflit sur la croissance au Canada devrait être faible pour deux raisons. D'abord, nos liens économiques avec l'Ukraine et la Russie sont limités. Et ensuite, même si la guerre a réduit la croissance mondiale, elle a fait augmenter la demande et les prix des produits de base que le Canada exporte, comme le pétrole, la potasse et le blé. On a aussi, aussi discuté de l'impact de l'inflation plus élevée sur les Canadiens et leurs attentes, inflation, leurs a, attentes d'inflation. Les Canadiens s'attendent à ce que l'inflation reste élevée pendant plus longtemps, mais ils anticipent une baisse de l'inflation et leurs ententes à long terme restent ancrées à la cible de 2 Finally, we discussed the impact of increasing our policy interest rate. While we've been clear with Canadians that they should expect a rising path for interest rates, seeing their mortgage rates and other borrowing costs increase can be worrying. We will be assessing the impacts of higher interest rates on the economy carefully. We also discussed where rates might end up. How high will they need to go? I know many Canadians have the same question, so let me share the Governing Council's thinking. Canadians should expect interest rates to continue to rise toward more normal settings. By more normal, we mean within the range we consider for a neutral rate of interest that neither stimulates nor weighs on the economy. The neutral rate isn't something we can measure directly. We have to estimate it. And our estimate is between 2 and 3%. Today, we raised our policy rate to 1%, still well below neutral. This is also below the pre-pandemic policy rate of 1.75%. Il faut se rappeler qu'on a une cible d'inflation et non une cible de ton d'intérêt. Le conseil de direction n'est pas un mode de pilote automatique. Il n'a pas de destination préétablie pour le taux directeur. Le niveau de le taux atteindra va dépendre de la réponse de l'économie 
et de l'évolution des perspectives d'inflation. Au moment d'entrer dans cette phase de demande excédentaire, l'économie est en plein essor et l'inflation est élevée. On est, est engagé à ramener l'inflation à la cible. It's important to remember we have an inflation target, not an interest rate target. This means governing council is not on autopilot to a pre-established destination for the policy interest rate. How high interest rates will go will depend on how the economy responds and how the outlook for inflation evolves. The economy has entered this period of excess demand with considerable momentum and high inflation, and we are committed to getting inflation back to target. If demand responds quickly to higher rates and inflationary pressures moderate, it may be appropriate to pause our tightening once we get closer to the neutral rate and take stock. On the other hand, we may need to take rates modestly above neutral for a period to bring demand and supply back into balance and inflation back to target. We will, of course, be updating our views on the outlook for the economy and inflation as new data come in, and we will continue to share our assessments so Canadians can make informed decisions. Let me conclude with a brief word on quantitative tightening. We expanded our balance sheet during the pandemic, first to help restore financial market functioning and provide liquidity to the financial system, and then to add further stimulus to support recovery. Last November, we stopped increasing our holdings of Government of Canada bonds and have been in the reinvestment phase since then. Today, we announce we're entering the next phase, quantitative tightening, or QT. Effective April 25th, we will stop purchasing Government of Canada bonds to replace our holdings as they mature, so our balance sheet will shrink. This will put upward pressure on borrowing costs further at the yield curve, complementing the increases in our policy rate. And with that, let me stop here, and Governor Deputy, Senior Deputy Governor Rogers and I would be very pleased to take your questions. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Gouverneur. Uh, passons maintenant au période de questions. We will uh, start with the reporters who we have here in the room before we go to those on the phone. Uh, for those on the phone, I'll just remind you to, to mute, mute your line when you're finished answering the question and do so by pressing star six. Unmute by pressing star six again. Remettre votre ligne en mode discrétion appuyé sur étoile six et pour l'enlever, faites étoile six encore une fois. So, uh, as I said, we'll start here in the room. We'll, let's do one question per reporter in this first round, please, and we'll see how we're doing on time. If I forget to do so, please state your name and affiliation. Et avant de poser une question, veuillez-vous identifier et libre-vous, bien sûr, à poser la question dans la langue officielle de votre choix. So let us begin, then, with uh, Steve Shearer from Thomson Reuters. Good morning. Um, I was just, uh, I wanted to follow up and ask you, um, when you say that uh, the interest rate, uh, to return inflation to target, you will do so forcefully if needed, raise interest rates forcefully if needed. This was interpreted by the markets to mean uh, 50 basis points in this move. Uh, do you think that that interpretation was fair? Uh, it seems that you have done exactly what the markets were expecting today. Uh, look, I, I, I'm going to let our, our, our words speak for themselves. Um, yes, we we are prepared to move, move as forcefully as needed to get inflation back to target. Uh, we took a, an important step this morning. Uh, it's clear we have more work to do. Next, let's go to Heather Scofield of the Toronto Star, please. Um, Governor, I asked you a few months ago about um, about uh, Pierre Poiliev going out and, and talking about uh, the Bank of Canada um, and the government working in tandem to to drive up inflation, and um, you, you responded at the time that you weren't uh, you weren't very concerned about it because inflation expectations were well anchored. They're not anchored as well anymore, and I'm, and that that discourse continues. And I wonder if you if you see any harm in that. Well, as, as we look, the longer inflation remains well above our target, uh, the greater is the risk that Canadians begin to think that this higher inflation is going to persist, and that becomes embedded in their inflation expectations. Uh, and the need to make sure that inflation expectations remain moored on our 2% target was an, 
was reflected in our decision today. Um, you know, much of the uh, high inflation we're experiencing today is coming from international factors. Uh, and, and the war in Ukraine has, has pushed, pushed commodity prices higher. It's further disrupted, already disrupted global supply chains. And, and that's uh, the principal reason why our inflation forecast is revised up. Um, as global supply chains begin, those, those pressures on global supply chains begin to ease, uh, as oil prices stabilize and, and uh, potentially start to decline, uh, inflation in Canada will come down, provided inflation expectations remain well anchored on our target. And that was, so uh, that wasn't the only reason, uh, but that was certainly a factor in our decision today. You know, the other part uh, is that uh, with an economy with considerable momentum, an economy that's moving into excess demand, uh, our domestic inflationary pressures are also uh, increasing. Uh, and uh, you know, the other key reason to raise rates today and to signal the need for further increases is that we, we need to bring demand and supply uh, back into balance and bring inflation back to target. Thank you. We'll go to uh, Rahul Vaidenat of uh, Epoch Times, please. Thank you for taking my question. I, I guess it's a bit similar to the question that was asked. Um, I mean, at the start of the pandemic, the government and Bank of Canada coordinated uh, extraordinary monetary and fiscal policy to get inflation back up to 2%. And it was always, I guess it was said at the time that inflation would climb dramatically. So, and, and there have been other events that uh, <laughs> uh, have exacerbated the situation. But in terms of, you know, breaking down the inflation, like how much of it is, you know, due to the extra fiscal policy, extra monetary policy and you know, the, the would would budget 2022 uh, have caused you to raise the inflation outlook uh, at all? Uh, you packed a lot into that question, <laughs> so let me let me try to because uh, I don't get a follow up right quite yet. <laughs> um, so, so so let me. There's really two parts to it. First of all, uh, I, I don't think I need to remind you uh, that the last two years have been incredibly challenging. Uh, you know, two years ago, we had uh, roughly three million Canadians uh, unemployed and more than another three million uh, working less than half their normal hours. Uh, you know, thanks to exceptional monetary and fiscal stimulus, thanks to effective vaccines, and thanks to the resilience uh, of Canadians, we've seen uh, a very impressive recovery in this economy. Uh, you know, the labor, labor market uh, is, has now more than recovered uh, from the pandemic. Uh, <clears throat> we are facing new challenges. Uh, we, we've experienced the sharpest decline uh, in our economy. We've, ever, we've also uh, experienced the fastest rebound. Uh, and you know, with, with that, uh, global supply chains have not been able to keep, keep up. They're, they're clogged. Uh, they're impaired, and with the surge, particularly in demand for goods, you're seeing uh, sharply higher goods prices. Uh, the war in Ukraine has further uh, increased inflation in Canada and around the world. Um, we've taken important steps. Uh, we've increased our interest rate today by 50 basis points to 1%. We've signaled that interest rates need to rise further. That will moderate spending growth in Canada. That will bring demand uh, more in line with supply. Uh, and that will bring inflation back to target. And so I do think Canadians can be confident that uh, we will control inflation. And if you look you know, back over our 30 years of inflation targeting, um, you know, there have been fluctuations in inflation before. Uh, and we've always brought inflation back to target. This, you know, the fluctuations we're seeing now, yes, they are, you know, bigger than we've seen in 30 years. Everything about this pandemic is bigger, uh, but we are, we are on a path, uh, and uh, that path will bring inflation back to target. With respect to the, the, uh, the government's recent budget, um, a couple of things. First of all, I, I mentioned that the, uh, the, the latest budget is not incorporated uh, in our, uh, the projection we published this morning. The budget came out less than a week ago. Uh, but what I can say is that um, 
you know, the, the, the net new uh, measures in the budget are about $30 billion over the next five years. Um, that is, is, you know, that is certainly a positive impulse, uh, but it's, it's not on a scale that would materially affect our projections. We remain uh, confident in our, in our inflation and GDP projections. Um, I think the, the budget could have a bit more effect on some of the components, but at agro level, we remain confident in our forecast. Uh, as you know, what we do is we take, whether it's provincial or federal government, uh, fiscal plans as given, and we put those into our projections. Uh, our job uh, is to uh, control inflation, uh, and, and that's what we're focused on. And you know, the, this, the uh, policy decisions we took this morning uh, reflect that. Our next question comes from Greg Quinn of Market News. Greg. Uh, good morning. I'd, I'd like to follow up on something Heather asked. I, I, I think specifically conservative lawmakers have used phrases such as saying you've printed money, bankrolled, uh, inflationary budget deficits. You know, you still are just turning to a passive roll off of bonds on the books. Um, Generally, is it a fair critique from the Conservatives? And, and specifically, would it not be a good idea to bring inflation down faster by putting those bonds back back into the market and getting them off your books? Uh, well, with respect to quantitative easing, um, we, we, we are stopping buying Government of Canada bonds. Uh, the, the bonds we have in our balance sheet, um, the maturity structure of those is, is relatively short term. Uh, so we will see a, a fairly uh, marked runoff of our balance sheet over the next two years. Um, roughly 40% of the bonds on our balance sheet will mature over the next uh, two years. So with, with, with uh, you know, a fairly good runoff um, at this time, we don't see the need to actively sell bonds. We'll now go to Paul Vieira from the Wall Street Journal. Governor, um, the real estate sector and housing has been a major driver of growth um, over, over the last little while. Um, yet, you you anticipate um, housing to be a ja drag on growth, but you expect um, you expect other parts of the economy to pick up the slack. Um, do you think your assessment of how much housing will slow? Um, how did you come to this? Uh, how did you come to this uh, expectation about the amount housing will slow? And are you confident that exports and business investment will pick up the slack, given that your predecessor um, used to talk about serial disappointment or something along those lines? Uh, I'm going to bring Senior Deputy Governor Rogers in here. Thanks, Paul, for the question. So uh, our expectation on housing activity is that it will moderate over time, particularly as interest rates come up. We should remember that it's starting from a, an extremely elevated level. So even, even as it moderates, we still think it will stay, uh, it will stay high. Uh, we, we don't think this will have um, a big drag on the economy. Um, certainly we have, we have talked for quite a while about the risk that uh, elevated house prices bring along elevated debt levels. Elevated debt levels can bring a vulnerability, a, a vulnerability to, the, to the economy, particularly in a rising rate environment. Um, so that's something we'll watch carefully. We think there's a number of things that'll, that'll uh, sort of offset that. Uh, one is that over the course of the pandemic, household balance sheets have improved. People have paid down debt. They've increased their savings. That will give them uh, a buffer against rising rates, rising mortgage rates, rising interest rates more generally. Um, uh, we should also remember that uh, rates are coming uh, from a very low point. So, uh, and, and there's been macroprudential policies in the market for a while now that uh, borrowers for mortgages um, are stressed, stress tested against a higher interest rate. So there's some distance to go between where mortgage rates are now and, and that higher rate. So that again will will buffer households against increases in mortgage rates. 
So, so just to summarize, we think, uh, uh, you know, as the governor said in his opening statement, we think the economy needs higher interest rates, including higher mortgage rates, uh, and, and we think that the economy can withstand them. In terms of whether business investment will pick up, um, I don't know that we're looking at it as an offset to the housing market, uh, but what we are hearing from businesses is that there is a stronger intention to invest um, as the economy recovers, the, the pandemic um, health restrictions come off, um, there is that, that optimism, that momentum behind the economy, and, and we are expecting to see some business investment pick up. Our next question is from Kevin Carmichael of the Financial Post. Uh, Governor, uh, commodity prices have taken off, but the exchange rate really hasn't. Has the traditional link between commodity prices and the dollar broken down, and would a higher uh, exchange rate be helpful at a time like this? Uh, Kevin, well, as you well know, um, we don't have an inflation target. We don't even, sorry, we don't have, sorry, <laughs> you know, we don't have an exchange rate target. We have an inflation target. Um, we don't even have a forecast for the Canadian dollar. Uh, in our own projection, we, we uh, keep the value of the Canadian dollar uh, constant near its, its current level. I think it's uh, 79 cents uh, in this projection. Um, so, um, what what I can say is, uh, you know, as you suggested, historically when uh, energy prices have moved up a lot, you have seen uh, some appreciation of the Canadian dollar. Um, we haven't seen as much of that, and that that has that has some implications. Uh, when 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 the uh, Canadian dollar moves up with higher oil prices, it um, provides a bit of a buffer. It reduces the Canadian dollar price of that increase in global oil prices. Uh, we're not getting that this time, so the, the inflation impulse is, is, is bigger. Um, for commodity producers, though, their Canadian dollar income uh, has actually increased by more because it's not being offset by the appreciation. Um, in terms of you know, trying to understand the Canadian dollar, um, and, and this, this is certainly... Uh, I'm going to leave it to, to markets to, to really determine the value of the Canadian dollar. Um, I think one thing, one element is oil prices have gone up a lot, um, but clearly part of this is caused by the war. Hopefully the war ends soon and uh, those come down, and I think that's what many producers are expecting. Certainly when you talk to them, they're planning on, on lower prices than today. Um, so we're not getting as much of an investment boom. They also may be looking uh, longer term to the transition to uh, zero carbon growth. Uh, so we're not getting the, as much uh, of an investment response uh, from the oil patch. We are certainly getting some investment response, but not as much as we have historically. The other element uh, that tends to play into exchange rates a lot are uh, Canada-US interest differentials. Uh, and you've seen uh, the US yield curve move up uh, very quickly uh, in the last number of weeks. So that interest differential has, has changed. It's actually slightly flipped around. That may also be weighing on, on, on the Canadian dollar. But as I said, in our own projection, um, We've, we, we, you know, it, it's built around a uh, Canadian dollar that is where it is now. Let's go now to Eric Hertzberg from Bloomberg News, please. Good morning, Governor. Um, you, you bumped up your forecast for uh, the neutral rate of interest and, and, and uh, the range for the neutral. Uh, markets have been saying uh, 3%. Uh, it's, it's happening in the next year. Are close to three percent, so this range is now, uh, you know, it lined up. Uh, you've messaged Canadians uh, consistently uh, in the past about uh, preparing. Now, in this opening statement, uh, it's prepare for getting to the neutral range, which is higher than the previous rate cycle. Uh, what I'm getting at here is just a question about household indebtedness and the preparedness of Canadians. How prepared and what are you looking for as rates go up for Canadian households? Um, okay, well, you, you, you've also managed to pack quite a bit into that question. Um, okay, in, in terms of the neutral rate, uh, I'll just start there. Um, as, we, as the economy really went off a cliff and, and slowed very sharply uh, at the outset of the pandemic, uh, we lowered the neutral rate. Uh, 
by uh, we lowered our our range, our estimated range of the neutral rate by 25 basis points. Um, you know that really reflected the fact that uh, we we saw a risk of a lot of labor scarring, much weaker investment, lower potential output growth. What's happened since then is the economy has bounced back very strongly. Um, we we think there's going to be you know we've now got a labor market that's actually more than recovered from the pandemic. Uh, our our concerns that there would be a lot of labor scarring are considerably uh, reduced. Uh, we're seeing as senior deputy Rogers just highlighted uh, very strong investment intentions uh, from businesses. That means more potential output, and so reflecting that we have. Um, moved our range for the neutral rate back up uh, to, to uh, two to three percent. Um, and you know what, what I what I indicated uh, in my opening remarks is that yes, we do think there will be a need uh, for the policy rate uh, to get up uh, closer to a neutral rate. Uh, you know from there, we probably need to be more humble. If demand responds, quickly to higher rates uh, and, and there's clear signs of moderation in inflation, it may be appropriate uh, to pause once we're closer to, to neutral, uh, at least for, for a period. Uh, but equally, uh, we might have more work to do. Um, the economy uh, has considerable momentum, labor markets are tight. If that momentum continues, we may need to take uh, rates uh, modestly above neutral for a period to to restore uh, balance between demand and supply and bring bring inflation back to target. Um, we will be watching uh, closely how the economy responds to higher rates, and and we are aware uh, that uh, household indebtedness is high in this country, uh, and that. That could mean that, that uh, the effect of rates um, will be more pronounced. On the other hand, as, as Senior Deputy Governor just mentioned, uh, households have actually saved more through this pandemic. Uh, they, <clears throat> their household balance sheets are improved, uh, and that'll tend to work in the other direction. So we will be watching closely how the economy responds to higher rates. Uh, and the most important thing we'll be watching is uh, the evolution of our outlook for inflation. Uh, we are committed to bringing inflation back to target, and we're prepared to be forceful if needed. Okay, we do have a couple of folks here uh, still in the room. However, um, there are some journalists who've been waiting very patiently on the line, and I just want to cover them off uh, quickly now. So let's go to uh, the phones, and Tony Mace from Na Mace News, please. Hi, yes, thank you, Governor. Uh, I note in the uh, monetary policy report the assumption that crude oil prices will come down from where they are now. How will you react if that doesn't happen? If instead of crude coming down below $100 a barrel, you see it at $150 a barrel headed into the next quarter? Thank you. Um, well, Tony, it's always a little hard to answer a question. You know, if something moves, uh, the next question is, why did it move? How long is it going to move for? Um, so, um, you know, it, it's a little bit hard to to give a clear answer to that question. But look, clearly, if uh, oil prices uh, end up being considerably higher than we've expected for for you know a, a, a period of time, uh, that means inflation is going to be higher. Uh, and we've been very clear that. Uh, with inflation already above our target, with the economy moving into excess demand, uh, with, with labor markets tight, with considerable momentum in the economy, uh, we are more concerned uh, about the upside risk to inflation than the downside risks. Our next question is from Jacqueline Hansen of CBC. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Thank you for taking our questions, Governor Macklem and Senior Deputy Governor Rogers. A bit of an overlap here with what you've already touched on, but 
we speak with a lot of Canadians who are really tuned into the challenges that are driving prices higher for them, like the war in Ukraine and its impact on global oil prices, driving gasoline prices, supply chain disruptions, causing goods to go higher, even climate change like the floods or fires in BC impacting crops and food prices that way. But can you help explain for Canadians just how raising your key overnight lending rates here will ease any of those factors? Do you have that control or is your goal really more psychological in that you want to influence Canadians' expectations for inflation and not directly those inflationary pressures themselves? Well, the short answer to your question is, is both. Look, inflation is too high and uh, it is affecting the 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 prices of everyday living of all Canadians. Uh, if, you, if you look at the components of CPI, what you see is more than two-thirds of the components are now rising faster than 3%. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, what that means is that you know, even the most careful shoppers can't avoid higher prices. Uh, you know, getting to the effects of, of higher interest rates, yes. Um, we need higher interest rates for two reasons. Uh, the economy is strong. Uh, it's moving ex into excess demand. We're starting to see uh, some real signs of domestic price pressures. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not just uh, international prices for oil, for example, that are going up. Uh, look at rents. Uh, they're, they, you know, they've moved up. Those are domestic price pressures. Um, we, we need to raise interest rates both to bring demand uh, in line with supply, reduce those domestic demand pressures. And we also need uh, higher interest rates to keep inflation expectations well anchored so that as these international uh, price pressures coming from higher oil prices, coming from clogged supply chains, the things you mentioned, as those uh, abate, um, inflation will come down if we keep inflation expectations well anchored. So. Yes, both of those uh, elements were reflected in our decision today to raise the policy rate by 50 basis points to 1% and to signal that Canadians uh, should continue to expect further increases in interest rates. Let's stay on the phones now with uh, Craig Lord from Global News, please. Hi there, uh, thanks for taking our questions. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, on that note about, you know, raising 50 basis points up to 1%, what does the 50, I mean, help to make it, sense, help it make sense for everyday Canadians who are already expecting interest rates to probably be on a rising path. What does a 50 point hike do uh, for inflation, uh, for expectations like that, that a 25 point, uh, the regular step that, that most would expect, doesn't do? Uh, what kind of message does that send? Um, <clears throat> well, I, look, I think the, the key point here is um, with inflation well above target, with the economy moving in excess demand, there is a need to normalize monetary policy uh, reasonably quickly. And, and that, that is reflected in the decision today to raise the policy rate by 50 basis points. Okay, we're going to come back to the room now, and I've got uh, Craig Wong from Canadian Press, please. Hi, Governor. Uh, how do you balance the risk of moving uh, too uh, uh, quickly on interest rates and causing a shock to household debt or versus moving too slowly and not doing enough to address interest rates? Those sort of two competing measures, how do you balance those? Uh, well, certainly that's... Uh, <clears throat> It's exactly uh, what we're uh, trying to do. Uh, you know, as, as I just said, uh, we've got an economy with inflation well above the target. Uh, that higher inflation, those higher prices, they're impacting all Canadians. Uh, we need to get uh, inflation down. Uh, the economy is strong. It can handle higher interest rates. It needs higher interest rates to bring demand uh, in balance with supply. Uh, and you know, as, as I outlined in my opening statement, um, we do see the need for interest rates to rise further, uh, but we're not on autopilot. Uh, we're not headed to some 
preset destination for interest rates. Uh, we have an inflation target, we don't have an interest rate target, and we will be assessing how the economy is responding. Uh, we will be looking at the impact of higher interest rates on Canadians. We are very aware that uh, Canadians' households on average uh, are relatively highly indebted. Um, the, the, uh, and, and the other thing we'll be looking at very closely is the evolution of, uh, of inflation. In fact, if you look at, I think it's chart 17 in the monetary policy report, um, you, can, you can see very clearly uh, both the quarterly and annual average forecasts we have for inflation. And this is getting a little technical, but um, you know, year over year inflation, which is which is our target, how we typically measure inflation. Of course, uh, it the year over year builds in a considerable amount of smoothing. There's a good reason for that. Um, but if you want a kind of a leading indicator, you can look at the quarterly rates of inflation and annual rates, which are in the chart. And what you see is in the second half of the year, uh, those uh, start to come down pretty quickly. Uh, and that's certainly something we will be watching for. Uh, is there clear evidence that inflation is, 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 is coming down? Are we getting close to our target? And that will be, uh, that will really be an important indicator to us on um, what, where we need to take interest rates to bring inflation back to target. I think can, if I can add the additional context to your question, Craig, and it goes to your earlier question, Eric, because we need to remember where late rates are now. They're, they're, they're still very low, they're still, low enough to be stimulating the economy. So, so that has an effect on our decision too and how, how quickly we want to get back, um, back, get rates back up and get um, uh, back to our t inflation target. So, so that's an important, we were at 1.75 before the pandemic where even with today's increase, we're at 1%, so. And we have time for one last question and that will go to Mark Rendell of the Globe and Mail. Thanks for uh, taking the question. I'm wondering with the, the oversized rate hike today and the aggressive, uh, I guess, path potentially going forward, is there a recognition in there that the Bank of Canada waited too long to start raising rates? And how much is this oversized hike today a response to concerns that credibility is being undermined by the high level of inflation? Mark. The way I would put it is that today's decision recognizes that uh, inflation is, is well above our target. Uh, it recognizes that we have revised up our outlook for inflation uh, relative to January. Uh, inflation is higher today than we thought it would be in January, and it's going to take longer to come down than we thought in January. Uh, the main reason for that that uh, upward revision is is the war in Ukraine. Uh, it's pushed commodity oil prices in particular, but also uh, wheat prices, other commodity prices up. Uh, and it is further disrupted already uh, clogged global supply chains. But, you know, as I indicated a few times, um, the economy is also stronger than we, uh, uh, we expected in January. Uh, we economy back in January, uh, we were in the midst of the Omicron variant. Uh, we've come through the uh, Omicron variant. The Canadian economy came through the Omicron variant uh, remarkably quickly. Uh, we Growth in the first quarter is a bit stronger than we thought it was going to be back in January. And importantly, uh, we, we see considerable momentum going into the second quarter. Uh, what you're seeing is, is as restrictions have been eased, households are going out and they're, they're buying the things they, they want to buy, uh, particularly more services. Uh, they continue to, they're continuing to buy goods at a, at a pretty solid pace. Uh, all that means, you know, we've got an economy uh, moving into excess demand with considerable momentum. And, you know, those were the factors that were uh, reflected in today's decision to move the policy rate up 50 basis points. And we're about out of time. So that concludes today's press conference. I'd like to thank uh, Governor Macklem and Senior Deputy Governor Rogers uh, for joining us. And thanks to all of you, both here in the room. Good to have uh, reporters back and people who uh, phoned in uh, on, on the lines. Appreciate your being here today. Uh, à la prochaine. Thank you very much. Thank you.